Okay, here are just a few of the things you uh, might need if doing uh, food delivery. First of all, we've got your cycling gloves. They're about 10 bucks a pair at uh, Decathlon or you can get 30 buck pair at uh, 99 bikes or bike bug. Um, I've got a few pairs of both, so they're good. Um, just some something to eat for yourself while you're on the road. Um, it's some Coles protein bars, about three bucks a box. This little baby here is the electric battery, um, which uh, I have an e-bike. This thing weighs about three or four kilos, uh, more like three probably. Um, yeah, that'll last you a couple of hours, depending on how hard you push it. Um, you obviously turn it off and on while you're on the bike so you can serve it more or you can just leave it on the whole time and punch it the whole way um, and yeah so you get a couple of hours out of it um, obviously a drink bottle don't forget to feed and drink yourself while you're out there and obviously this day and time you get face mask with you um, yeah and a front and rear light that's just, yeah, very basic rear light. I've got a bigger one coming. Front light's pretty bright, so yeah. And also a battery pack to keep your phone charged. Um, okay, and we'll show you the rest of the gear a bit later on. Alrighty, here's part two of my little uh, setup video. Um, I did one the other week of uh, got sort of light in the front, a little speedometer there. Where the battery pack sits and the quad lock there is where the phone sits. I'll show you just how easy it is to put on and take off. You put hold that little blue part down, a little bit at the back of the phone, put it on a roughly 45 degree angle, and she's in. And to take her out, hold the blue bit down, off she goes. Beautiful. Um, yeah, battery sits on the back just in there. See you lock it on, um, and also we'll come over the other side. Or which side is on? Oh, it's this side, of course. <laughs> Little uh, USB outlet there. You can, if uh, phone runs out of power, battery pack. Your phone battery's out of power as well. You can use the uh, bike battery pack. Yeah, little pannier bags here. This one I've got two locks. I've got. Big heavy D lock, it should be wet from last night. Um, and you've also got a hip lock, Z lock, Z lock there, talk like American. <laughs> um, the D lock is extremely solid, no one's cutting through that. That's brilliant. It's and the Z lock's kind of like a cable tie. The Z lock, it um, you obviously. Put that through there, that locks up, and it's a combi lock. I won't show you the combi. Leave those in the sun there to dry off for a bit from last night, because they were out a few times. Um, and up here, a little tool kit, a couple of spare tubes, a, uh, there's a multi-tool in there, and that little bag as well. Um, pump, and a puncture repair kit. Very basic tools. I have uh, light that I bought from Bunnings, about 10 bucks each. Night riding, um, in case you need to use your tools at night. And I also have another little random bag in there for who knows what. It's actually a little bit wet as well, like that in the sun. Okay, and on the top there, I've just got another little torch for occasions where you might need to lock the bike up and get to the combi that was a cheap one that was about five or ten bucks at Coles a lock to lock the panniers to the bike okay the other pannier bag lots of cleaning gear <laughs> Glen 20 spray and go dead old wipes hand sanitizer and sunnies Nice pair I bought at 99 bikes. Get those out. And high vis vest. Haven't really used it yet. There's a 
bag over there I'm about to show you is actually quite high visibility. Um, and they have all sorts of random stuff in here. There's a spare uh, phone and battery carrier. A couple of uh, flushable wipes there in case nature calls. Little uh, band-aids. Some random plastic bags, cable ties. Um, a few other things in there. Just a phone charger in case I take a rest stop at a uh, coffee shop or something that um, might have a phone charger. It's a little bit wet from last night. Leave that in the sun. And yeah, it's a pannier inside the pannier bag, so it's pretty good. There, um, that was about seventy odd bucks at ninety nine bikes for the pannier bags. So far, so good. Um, so yeah, and then yeah, obviously the uh, food delivery bag. You can see it's quite a high biz, high viz. Sorry, high viz. Yeah, we'll come over here, you can actually see it sort of shine the sunlight a bit. So, um, yeah, it's sort of hobbies all the way around. So, if people can't see that on the road, then they should open their bloody eyes. <laughs> and that's another bit of high vis gear a very light rain jacket by Kmart. They're about five bucks, five, ten bucks. They actually work pretty well. So, yeah. A menu log bag, which they actually sent me this free of charge when I signed up with them that's the bag and the jacket as well you've probably seen quite a few people buzzing around on bikes and in cars wearing these um, it's not too thick this is more of a I think it's more of a rain type jacket and you don't have to wear it you don't have to use the bag um, when riding for them but obviously it's nice too if they send it for you for free um, they actually sent me a second one free of charge, maybe by accident as well. Um, yeah, all good. I've still got that wrapped up in plastic up in the top cupboard there. So who knows? Maybe one day I might need it or I might sell it on eBay. We'll see. Um, and you might ask, what the hell's a towel for? Um, just for, if you get a single meal in there, you want to keep it hotter. And so it doesn't move around inside the bag.
everyone's cruising up up the hill. They are, you're doing <laughs> struggling, well. struggling. What do you have in your bag? Oh, which bag? <laughs> The orange one, nothing at the moment, but later on it'll be food. Yeah. All right, have a good one. See ya. start with Uber. It's uh, about 1.30 on a Sunday afternoon. We will, um, we will, I will, <laughs> doing this until say about 3, 3.15, then 3.15 I've scheduled a menu log run, so 3.15 till 6.15 we'll do menu log. Be quiet, coming through the so there's a round So they've probably got a group of workers all knocking off at 7.15. Watch your game. Obviously a big West Tigers fan, but if anyone but the Tigers, I want the Panthers to win the grand final. So they're my second team. Scooter, I should say. So I nearly bought one. Very, very nearly bought one. A couple of years ago. And a lot of fun. If you remember the video I did where I went up to uh, Palm Beach one day, my old BS150. Those are the group of guys on hunted scooters, and they were a lot of fun. Okay, first one of the day, Betty's Burgers. Let's go. Take me. I don't know the way to Barangaroo, so probably won't use that all that much. Maxi soon. Get him on a scooter or a bike, and he'll love it down here.
bucks there. That was a probably a good thing I wasn't filming that because the uh, young lady came out in her dressing gown because like she just got out of the shower. So we'll head back to the city and uh, see what we can get. It's now two o'clock. We've got another hour. Of, ooh, ooh, got one. There we go. Easy mark, 65 pit. We'll say that. Radio right, yeah, pit pit. Okay, so for this one, we're heading to the Shangri-La Hotel. <laughs> Bit of a chippy run. It's, uh, Sunday afternoon. Just woke up. NRL Grand Final tonight. They're delivering him his uh, chips and got us a sort of bag of popcorn in there as well and a few other things. So it looks like he's going to enjoy the Grand Final tonight. To the uh, Shangri-La so we'll uh, crank it up to level five and we'll punch it right up his hill. <laughs> yeah, right, sorry. Okay. Okay, up we go. stay sitting going up this hill that's what level five is like holy moly I can and right here at huts no one on the road beautiful okay where are we Shangri-La well, here are the kind of customs we like came down to the front entrance collected it sweet all right got another one another hit going to Mr Liquor at Circular Key all righty We'll take that, thank you. Alrighty, and down this massive hill now, I'll show you how well the brakes work. They are hydraulic disc brakes, and they can handle almost anything. They uh, kept me very safe last night in the wet, although I wasn't punching it too hard, but uh, yeah. I would not do this on my old mountain bike. That's the stopping pair of the hydraulic disc brakes. Circular key. Very quiet for a Sunday. This is packed. I'll ship in. So that one is the liquor. Okay. building that I think was completed late 90s early to mid 2000s no one likes to look of and they've called it a massive toasters big square box
customer. Came straight up. I need check sweet. Couple of bottles of wine in the park on a Sunday. Bit day like this. And some people call this working. I sure don't. <laughs> It's nearly time to jump on many logs, so head back into the city, maybe do one more, and then switch from Uber to many log. This Green Park Hotel here is being uh, used by my old employer, the North St. Vincent's Hospital, which is just down the road there, um, to be built into a mental health centre. other sort of associated things to do with the hospital which will be good very bright future ahead for them which is uh, nice to see alrighty just finished with the day with Uber and just logged on to menu log now made $38 for what was it two hours maybe if that two oh, about two hours yeah for Uber so Tidy little earnings there, and now we'll see what mini log brings. I'm doing mini log now from uh, 3:15 to 6:15 p.m. I'm head back to the CBD. Should get a few uh, a few pings from there. Matter of fact, take a slight detour down past St Vincent's Hospital, where I used to work. Had a good time there, uh, great bunch of people and I will surely make a donation to their city to, city to surf effort soon so and who knows I might even do it with them or not really with them because it's virtual but as part of their team. Should be good fun. And here's my old building. Used to work in that exact building there. We we'll call it the Delacy building. And uh, it used to be a hospital ward, now it's sort of administrative type stuff. Uh, finance up on level four, uh, level above us. Saw them occasionally. on the left just recently been renovated it's nice do a good job yeah, fond memories picking out for all your car drives out there be a car driver myself I'm more than happy to quickly overtake Cyclist. If you are behind the cyclist and the cyclist is pulling in, pull around and overtake them. We do not mind. We would prefer you overtake us as quickly as possible. Not speeding like hooligans, of course, but efficiently, let's say. Don't stop, walk. Uh, hesitate. The more you hesitate, the more chance we've got of putting our arm out and jumping out in front of you like that. And your day will then be a minute slower, roughly. So, cyclist pulls over to the left. Come through. Because they want you to overtake them.
it's what you call a $6.30 tip. Uh, that was the one that I delivered from the uh, liquor store down at Circular Quay to the Botanic Gardens. Thank you very much. I won't say the name or anything. But uh, yeah, the see the delivery there was um, around $7 and that's a $6.30 tip. So fantastic. Thank you. Alrighty, so I've got the situation where menu log were a bit quiet so we're going to now jump on DoorDash and we've literally just got one straight away as soon as I logged on and we have Google Maps talking to me shut up <laughs> so to Mr Liquor at Circular Quay again so there's a lot of people down that way um, nice as I said before nice Sunday in the Botanic Gardens bottle of wine, a few beers, whatever the case may be. So, get on down there now. Picked that one up. And uh, we, sh I'm staying online on menu log. It's sort of not really, it's a little bit frowned upon. But, I don't want to sit here all day doing a, uh, the Sunbaker Darling Harbour on menu log and I could be helping out the DoorDash so we're going to help DoorDash for a little bit and uh, I think a few more menu log orders will come through closer to dinner and then more a uh, meal based thing whereas DoorDash has got absolutely everything these days you can do uh, you can get chemist runs you can get uh, alcohol runs as, as is this one you can get uh, you can even go shopping at Coles, they can send you to shop at Coles and they've got like a little prepaid card that they attach to your account, your DoorDash account and you uh, run into the shop, grab everything you need at the shop everything the customer needs and then you go and deliver it Happy days! Yeah, it's a, uh, so far for me it's been a fun job, one or two little gripes here and there, minor things, but uh, you get that with every job, but the gripes here are really, really minor, like Google Maps sending you the wrong way, sending you to the back of a house instead of the front, you get to the back and you realise it's the back. So you're going to waste about another minute or two then coming back to the front. Now that happened last night on the run. I had a double order at Glebe and it did that to me for both orders. So thank you for that Google Maps. Pull your socks up. I actually just had a bit of a realisation. It's now half, well, half an hour before my menu log running start to run which was 3.15 it's now 3.45 so I think menu logs missed the uh, daylight savings far out don't know if I should tell them or not no bugger it <laughs> let's do this door dash and see how we go with that head back to the city and by then the menu log run will start yeah, looks like mini log of um, forgotten daylight savings. Hmm. Alrighty, no sooner do I arrive at Mr. Liquor, we get one order, another order hits. So, sweet, $15. It's both. On our way now up to the Marriott Hotel, which is not far. alcohol orders here so it's taking up a fair bit of weight in the old bags and 
7 kilos in the backpack uh, we've just gone up that hill quite easily so again it shows the uh, effort level 5 on the pedal assist okay we had the uh, two orders there that were being done at a quarantine hotel and they were both alcohol deliveries so more people gonna enjoy the NRL grand final tonight with a few beers customers couldn't actually come down and get it and I couldn't go up to the room so I had to leave the orders with the reception desk and had to get the uh, customers to send through their ID and I had to fiddle around with the app a little bit a um, little bit of a, a little bit fiddly but you know got to be done um, so yeah another two happy customers now right menu log have just given me the uh, heads up that my run starts now <laughs> so yes they had missed the uh, daylight savings which occurred overnight um, and so yeah we're on to menu log now I'll, uh, I'll get a bit of drill streak for you see the new light route for those uh, who haven't been to Sydney in the last few years So Sydney looks a bit different now. For those of you who haven't been here, Mick Simmons Sport has actually changed location as well in the last few years. It's a light rail heading down the circular key just outside the QVB. Odd people going from Circular Key to oh, South Springs. There's not many on this one at all. Yeah, right. yeah, they look nice, but they're a bit of a waste of money. End up costing something like three to six billion dollars. It's billion with a B to go on a route where there's there were buses already doing it so obviously it was completed before the pandemic hit but uh, even since then people don't really use them a lot a lot um, if you're a tourist world you want to do that you'd rather walk see the whole city to jump in a light rail. First order from Minilog. Uh, we're going to Hungry Jacks. Hit the pipes. Oh, yeah, not far. Let's go. Okay, while we're here, before we do this order, we'll uh, give the bag a quick spray with some of this stuff. Get the old green 20. Just freshens it out a bit. Stops your uh, beer smelling like whatever was in there before has the added benefit of killing whatever may have been in there if any germs or what have you so uh, yeah we'll do that and head up and grab the uh, Hungry Jacks now now okay, taking this one down to uh, Shelley Street this is the Hungry Jacks order so we're here in Fly Down Sussex and we'll be almost there then a couple of minutes to pick up some delivery it's good Another nice customer. Um, just held the hand out the door, didn't even get to see her face, but she sounded nice. <laughs> Never know she may have been starkers. <laughs> oh, she, nah, just joking. All good, so I'll head on down to the new Jumbo Tie at Union Street at Piermont now. That's uh, we'll go across the Piermont Bridge and uh, Straight up, 
picked that one up in Piedmont and that one's heading down to Chippendale. There's a whole lot of new places down at Chippendale. We'll, uh, I'll get them on camera for you, the new apartments and there's also a nice, a nice sort of park in the middle of all the apartments. We'll see if we can get that down on there for you as well. If it's near there, I haven't quite looked at the address yet, but um, yeah, so heading to Piedmont now. Up you. New building there is still being built. See the uh, local kids have hit a few sixes there. The windows are boarded up. <laughs> and so here's the International Convention Centre and Sopitolo Hotel. Sort of. for their fast speedy service and great food jumbo tie at Piemont did you call it Piemont Star City Casino same area really <laughs> anyhow we're now off to Chippendale lock off come through pretty sure this is UTS um, University of Technology Sydney nearing uh, Chippendale our location now not far off a couple of minutes away sort of more Broadway there we should cross over Broadway building there that people haven't been to Sydney for a couple of years wouldn't have seen this is done a pretty good job here except that building with the bloody plants on the outside I'm not mad keen on that <laughs> we'll uh, put the brakes on here and you can have a bit of a look down Broadway a bit too last of us for me great game but in real life I don't think we really should be planting outside that one doesn't look too bad but around the corners that looks nice and straight ahead's that little park I was telling you about jump across in there and um, I'll show you that little park Park and there's a few shops in there, there's obviously Adidas there, Super Dry, Hype DC, Shoe Shop, Foot Locker, Blue, oh my god, Shoe Shops galore. And a Catman don't, uh, Catman do so. Don't drag. <laughs> Location is just down here through the park actually. And it comes to the right. the bus. Our location is down here through the park there down to the right. So we'll uh, head off soon once the man turns green. I think he's green. Here we go. Cool. <laughs> Do this. 
to everybody. Thanks, man. customer once again all customers are nice this job that's one of the uh that's one of the perks of the job you know every customer's nice this way lots of apartments have been built here Sully around here as well. Might be worth hanging around here. Just gonna get one or two from there. So yes, it was Carlton in other breweries, Carlton Street. I'm actually coming into uh, another part of the old brewery. Asian food restaurants, this is obviously not one. It's an Italian one, but we'll get to walk through there and not too sure how many would be operating because this is more of a come in and uh, eat. Okay, there's a few operating. Ah cool, tuk tuk. Oh you're joking. I'll do one of those on there. But yeah, this is spice alley, you can imagine at night time, you're lit up, people coming out everywhere be uh, nice. All right, Surrey Hills Dumplings, 240 Elizabeth Street, Surrey Hills, and bring it back here. Yeah, we'll accept. Sounds good. Oh yeah, off we go to Surrey Hills. Here's another place I used to work many, many years ago, 2008. The head office for the New South Wales Department of Directive Services, as it was known by back then. It's now Department of Communities and Justice. Yeah, big, different names, same stuff, you know. So, uh, yeah. Been all over Sydney today. It's good fun. Yeah, for you, just the other side of Central Station. Sort of the start of Surrey Hills here. Light rail there, comes down through here, and up Devonshire Street. The old Exhibition Hotel. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad here. Perfect example here of where Google Maps does my head in. It's telling me to go up, left, around the park to the restaurant. When I could just go straight. Google Maps lift your game. Alrighty, nice little dumpling restaurant top one. Uh, pick up the order on our way to the customer now who's back in Chippendale. So yeah, nice and close. Um, Order wasn't quite ready, so I had a couple minutes wait there. It's always nice to stop and have a breather and uh, yeah, just chill out a bit, have a drink. Um, yes, it's not all not all hard work and pumping up crazy ass hills, as people might think. Here's your light roll again. We have Danny's dumplings in the bag, hot, on its way. We'll take a shortcut 
through Sydney Central Station, which is apparently Australia's busiest, or biggest or busiest, one of the two. I would have thought maybe Spencer Street in Melbourne would have been bigger and or busier, but yeah, apparently Central here is. So uh, yeah. We're on our way to Danny with his dumplings now. used to be a car wash when I worked at the Department of Corrective Services. I used to come down here oh, once or twice a day with a, to get the cars washed. It's now a cafe by the looks of it. It's connected to the Uni of Notre Dame maybe. Um, yeah, so. And just across the road, a bit further back to the left there, is where I sold my car. The fellow lived there. Uh, 2001 model Lancer sold in 2008 for 8,000 bucks. Uh, that was just before I went to London. A good fun period of my life. back up to uh, Spice Alley area here and we'll see if we can't get one or two more hours before heading home. And what about two there? I'm sure as the sun will shine. We've got another order. The beauty. Can't see just across the road. Yeah, the Panthers. Another one on the job. Punch it, punch it. Just about to take uh, Trevor's order to him. That was a 10 minute wait there at KFC, that was shocking. Uh, could have got one, another one or two orders in that time anyway. Edgewood Court Hotel. Scene of my infamous, or well, one of my infamous tantrums. Uh, that was while we were watching the 2006 Australia vs Japan at the World Cup. We watched that there at the pub uh, with a table of about 10 people, 8, 10 people. And nothing was going the soccer his way, and I was pissed. I was pissed right off. Um, so I said, about the 60th minute, I said, right, fuck this, I'm out of here. And as soon as I stepped my foot outside the pub, I heard this almighty wall go up. I thought, what's that? And I found out that soccer striker Tim Cahill had scored. Got us back into it, one all. So I said, all right, I'll stay inside and watch for a bit. I managed to make my way back inside. Uh, the people everywhere, you know, as you can imagine. Got over to near the stairs and... Uh, who was that? I think Aloisi scored the second goal. So we went 2-1 up. So I was, yeah, all right, I'll stay in now and watch where 2-1 up. And then Tim Cahill came along again and iced the cake a couple of minutes later. 3-1 Socceroos, thank you very much. Neil was a happy boy. So yeah, just another memory of uh, my time living in Sydney. That was the 2006 World Cup game between Australia and Japan. That was a fun night. Thank you. A few beers, a little tantrum. Yeah, all good. Anyway. 
back to Trevor's KFC order. He wants it hot, he's going to get it hot. Alrighty, still going with the uh, menu log. It's supposed to end there soon, but uh, a little bit of a problem. My gears are changing through, they're not shifting. Still can't hear the click of the gears, so I've just got the, uh, thankfully got plenty left in the battery, so I'm going to have this all up to Warmaloo. And we might call it quits there. Not far from there now, so straight up right. I'm true to myself, with, uh, we were going to stop it, but we got an order straight away, so on with the show for a little bit longer, heading up to Potter Point, do a delivery in Darlinghurst, and then I think I'll end the run there. So yeah, it should be a nice ride home, and who knows, my gears might have been fixed by then, we'll see. <laughs> If they can naturally clock in, we'll see, but should be a fun ride home. Go um, King's Cross, Darlinghurst, what's the point? Michelle, is that the one? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. See ya. the day with a quick look at the day's uh, earnings. Just moved up under the lights here. I think this is going to be a very profitable couple of hours. This street light here. Let the lights on. Alrighty, this is menu log. We've done 70 bucks on menu log. And check the other two. We end up with Uber.
visit is uh, notoriously funny. I'm just trying to get through to the part that I want to see here for today's efforts. Crown towers. <laughs> no, you never know. Might yet become a casino. Taking the time.
a way to do it. Get up, dust yourself off, and get back on the bike. That's how it's done, young fella. Must be a Balmain boy. Not that there's many of them left these days, but. That's my guy. Don't. Oh, cool. I love this one.
music of the night. We're uh, about to get home, so we'll uh, end the video there. Thank you all for watching.